Hi guys, this is Grandmaster Levan Aroshidze and today we will have another video lesson. Our theme is Corner Pawn Attack. Um, this is a very famous, powerful and um, dangerous weapon in the chess and it could be used uh, in the different stages of the chess game. Uh, for example, starting from the opening with a lot of pieces at the board, finishing with these uh, deep limited material end games. Uh, this happens because uh, corner pawn attack may have uh, various uh, purposes. Everything depends in, um, on a concrete situation at the board, concrete pawn structure and the position. Um, what we could say is that generally, of course it's not a rule, but generally, uh, in the most of the cases, corner pawn attack starts when opponent has a fianchetto pawn structure. Uh, this is the uh, most, well, one of the most effective ways to create problems for the fianchetto and try to explore uh, the weaknesses of this structure. I like fianchetto, I make it in a many many various opening systems uh, when I play g6 or g3 with the white and plays bishop on g7 it's it's a really very nice diagonal for the bishop of course uh, also king feels quite safe in this uh, little uh, flat little house when I castle in a fianchetto but from another point as we already mentioned mm, this provokes um, corner pawn attack uh, corner pawn attack and um, that can cause cause uh, serious problems to the king or generally to the structure so uh, let's start let's see uh, practical examples when this pawn corner corner, uh, corner pawn attack works well and uh, what are the purposes what could be the purposes of this idea first example is my own game i was playing with white and my opponent decided to, to play the Spirit Defense with the Fianchetto, as we see. So I thought, uh, okay, I'm going to cast a long side and attack the king, the black, black's uh, king side. Bishop g7, uh, queen d2, c6. Okay, c6, uh, it's obvious that now black wants to prepare b5, as he, well, in this case, as she realized that uh, I'm going to cast a long side and also tries to create some pawn storm on this flank. So, castle, castle, king b1. Uh, this is a good prophylaxis. If you have a time for this move, it's always a good idea to make this king b1 uh, in old kind of um, long, long castle uh, positions. Uh, now pawn a2 will be better protected, uh, c1 square is free for some concrete cases, for example at some point knight could go there and uh, support pawn a2 even more, so it's it's really a good good move. b5, and now we see that black created threat of playing uh, b4, and then wants to win the pawn e4, so obviously we play uh, f3. B4. Now, if black would start with queen a5, we see one more purpose of this king b1. Now, uh, king, uh, queen takes queen will not uh, be captured uh, with the check, and we can simply play knight d5. Very strong move, and uh, black has a problem, so already serious problems, because in this case we make intermediate check, winning the material, and then already taking the queen. So black played b4, knight e2, a5, and here we go. Uh, okay, this was possible to prepare also with a g4, but I didn't want to waste the time, and I wanted to immediately push this pawn and open my rook to create direct uh, mating attack over the king. This is probably the, the first most simple purpose of this corner pawn attack in the opening stage of the game. Uh, so also I want to weaken opponent king's position. My opponent decided to play uh, h5. Okay, um, letting me to play h5 myself, um, 
it it never gives good result to to the defensive side because for example queen b6 protecting the pawn planning a4 for example we play h5 we don't care about this pawn we are ready to sacrifice it in order to open the rook as we mentioned before and uh, attack immediately there so after knight uh, knight takes h5 for example uh, g4 uh, bishop h6 Another uh, typical way of um, weakening opponent's king, exchanging this fianchetto bishop, and now after that exchange, um, uh, dark squares over the black king will become really very weak. A4, take, check, g5, and the game is finished because now we have a typical sacrifice. Okay, it's even not necessary. White can play knight f4, knight g3. Uh, it's, it's just a one side game or knight f4 now, and I don't see how black will defend from this mating attack. So, what my opponent uh, decided to do was h5. This is also a well known trick against the corner pawn attack. Uh, in many opening systems because corner pawn attack is used for example in Dragon Sicilian, in Pyrk, in Zemish and in Kings Indian and many other and many other very uh, well-known opening systems. So h5 is also known plan but uh, it doesn't actually stop it uh, for the long time uh, because we can me make this sacrifice, also famous and typical pawn sacrifice. Uh, we are ready to give uh, two pawns at some point. For example, after pawn takes, white is going to play knight g3. And actually, I don't, I don't, I don't care about uh, pawn takes f3. Okay, it could be taken with the knight, but I think much more powerful would be simply h5. Finally, advancing this corner pawn, entering into the contact and opening our rook, and it should bring decisive advantage. Uh, doesn't change the case, for example, knight h5 here, because, well, knight takes, pawn takes, simply bishop h6, I want to weaken even more the opponent's king's position. f6 avoiding queen g5, and just knight e2. Knight will go to g3 h5 pawn has problems um, game should be finished quite quickly here so uh, my opponent decided to play knight d7 after g4 probably the idea was that if i will take now um, black may take two and let's say in order of knight f4 Okay, th th there is the knight g3 move that should be calculated, but also simply knight f6. And somehow, black still keeps here the blocking structure on h5. I believe here also why it should be better. But uh, there is no need to go in, the two, in, in this variation, because white has much stronger continuation. Knight g3, just increasing the pressure of h5 pawn, and now I want to take it. So it's forced. Um, pawn takes g4 and h5. Again, this famous idea that we already were talking about. Everything for the rook. We want to open it. Uh, position objectively is lost. My opponent just uh, made a quick mistake here. The matter is that we don't need to open now this, this file. We simply may play h6. And uh, after bishop uh, h8 h7 uh, game is lost because in order of um, king g7 uh, we will play check king takes h7 bishop f8 check so this is the most simple purpose of the corner pawn attack simply destroying fianchetto structure open h1 rook by the way i would just like to pay your attention to the sicilian dragon line just to show that this this um, famous uh, corner pawn attack is really used in many different opening structures. Bishop c4, castle, a rook c8, bishop b3, knight e5, king b1, a6, and how are we gonna attack now the dragon? h4, planning h5, and opening our h1 rook. Generally, black is uh, stopping this h4 pawn, and now white answers with this sacrifice that we already saw. And let's say rook g1. 
now we intend to create serious pressure over these semi-open files here. So, okay, now, we see, uh, also this is example from my, my game, mm, this, uh, here we played French, it's a typical French pawn structure, Rubinstein line, when black takes only four, and uh, I, I wanted to do something on this diagonal, right? So um, I just played queen e4, and now black is in a very tough situation because one possible move is uh, g6 that was played actually in the game. And if, for example, opponent plays just f5, we may go back because we provoked the weakness, serious weakness. Now pawn backward pawn e6, that is always under the attack. Bishop, H, uh, bishop c4 also could increase the pressure over this pawn. And of course, I don't believe in this uh, h takes g5 because there, there's no way that black king would be able to survive this attack on the h file. So my opponent after queen e4 decided to play g6. But what now? g6 actually is another uh, move that we would like to provoke together with the 5 and now pawn h4 enters into the contact and finally will be exchanged not only exchanged in order to liberate the rook but also simply to weaken the king's position we already saw this similar idea pawn took on uh, g5 we takes on g6 um, a lot of threats are coming now over the black king and black plays f5 well uh, here uh, I was able I was really lucky to make a very beautiful combination uh, also I would say that in simply Queen e2 should be winning but of course you already all understood what combination uh, started after a 5 move uh, Rook h8 check King takes Queen h1 check check g7 okay still it's not a checkmate but for now the threat is uh, taking the rook and bishop cannot take because queen is also hanging so black decided to develop the bishop and now I, th I, was, I was thinking how to finish the game I need some additional attack over the black king I thought I'm going to play rook h1 rook h6 but now matter is that if I play rook h1 immediately black may take this pawn and suddenly King gets the square to escape somehow. Uh, so then I realized that I should play just bishop e2. This is a very very nasty move. Um, white threats uh, this check and if king f7 then bishop finishes the game. And if g4 will be played then rook h1 because there is no pawn takes f4 move to liberate the square for the black king and now rook h6 is winning the game well my opponent played bishop c6 but now as we already mentioned check check and after king g8 checkmate okay let's take a look on another example it's already a middle game position probably it appeared from the English opening but okay could happen something else and um, fianchetto bishop is already is exchanged right already is exchanged here so black king is a little bit suffering with this weak dark squares however why doesn't have this dark square bishop and so far nothing terrible can happen here um, white saw the idea of the exchange sacrifice rook takes d6 pawn takes d6 queen takes d6 and now pawn d6 is also hanging but let's say after rook d7 black, uh, black uh, protects everything he's holding on so far so white thought that it was a slightly early and first of all he decided to go just h4 that's the fianchetto so let's go for pressuring it so uh, corner pawn attack also has the psychological pressure purpose because the opponent never know what we going what we are going to do after for example h5 
maybe we will exchange our G6 on G6 and simply weaken the uh, pawn shelter of the black king. Or as there is no dark square bishop, we could push this pawn till H6. And then white it simply starts to create these uh, checkmate threats on the long diagonal and simply on G7 square. So it's really, really very nasty and very often the mechanical answer here is H5. But after H5, the combination that we already saw in the beginning works perfectly. Pawn takes, queen takes F6, and now if black will go to protect the 6 pawn after bishop d5, we realize that pawn h4, e pawn h5, and pawn h5, including those two moves, what, 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 what happened now after that? g6 is weak. There is no pawn h7 already which were supporting this pawn. So I want to simply take queen g6 and finish the game. Of course, if king h7 simply bishop takes f7 and black is already lost. So another purpose, another uh, idea of h4 corner pawn attack that uh, somehow it doesn't look like after first look but in truth we weaken king's position, the pawn chain after any kind of blocking move. It always like this. So black decides to play rook f8 he gave up pawn d6 but wants to protect this and this after bishop d5. Okay, white took rook d6 and it's already enough material. Bishop, very strong bishop that probably will go to d5 uh, plus two pawns against one rook, black rook. It's more than just enough. Uh, matter is that now also g4 is coming. Another well-known attacking idea after this corner pawn attack and blocking h5. Queen a6, take. Well, he could take here, but now after h4, black king's position will be just destroyed. However, okay, also after queen a3, I don't see the, the, the escaping line for black. Bishop f7 and there is no material left at the board at all. So, Let's go for another example. Uh, this is again my game, my own game. Um, well, dragon. White has a better pawn structure. Typical Marozzi advantage. Strong knight on d5. That's difficult to push away because if black plays e6 and knight goes away, then pawn d6 starts, starts hanging. So I, I realized that here I could play, for example, bishop h6 exchange fianchetto bishop to weaken opponent's king also with the same idea to play bishop at d4 but finally i decide to go for h4 uh, to be honest i i did not have a concrete idea what i was going to do after h5 as i mentioned is also a psychological attack we will decide later we will exchange here or push the h4 till h6 but it really makes nervous opponent. Uh, he decided to ignore pawn h4 and I guess uh, he just played rook d8. But if he would play h5, for example, or a well known answer, then what happens? King structure is weaker and especially pawn g6 is weaker because now it has less protection. So white is going to play bishop d4. Okay, let's say black starting to create some corn chances or search for those corn chances. And f4, because now f5 attack and exchanging on d6 will weaken even more black king, as we already provoked h5 move by playing h4. Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight d7, rook f1, f5, with a clearly better position for white. As I mentioned, my opponent just played uh, rook d8, I guess, and of course h5, e6. Well, we already mentioned the disadvantage of this move, knight c3, and terrible, terrible, terrible continuation. 
uh, well, I realized that my opponent also already starting started to be a little bit worried about the position. Also, there was a time trouble, so probably this is the reason of this pawn takes h5. But it opens the king and destroys simply the pawn structure. This is terrible. Better was just to wait and somehow try to hold on here. After pawn takes h5, knight b5, and of course bishop h6. Now warrior's threats are coming, and another decisive mistake. Probably knight b7 should be played here. Take, take, and check. Well, I have to mention that uh, immediately queen g5 looks like that is winning, but it's not winning because there is a queen c5 check, and black will exchange the queens. So it's much more clever and smart to play like this and simply a f4 and anyway the black's position is terrible of course here in the game he played bishop e5 check and now what happens we get access to those squares to checkmate the king because there's only one bishop who protects those squares so knight takes d6 bishop is hanging already but bishop cannot take the knight because queen f6 is coming checkmating 